It's that time of the year again, folks. Time to settle down with your ugly sweater, drink some extremely rich hot chocolate that'll surely haunt your bowels till New Year's, and maybe watch a TV movie featuring people of color with no interior lives beyond supportive best friend and or shop owner. I mean, I'm bundled up now, but I'm in Texas, so probably gonna look a little more sweaty as the video goes on. Enjoy. So over on my Twitch channel this month, I've been playing holiday-ish themed games, and I've quickly discovered that most of them aren't very good. Basically, the best ones you can find are holiday movie themed games or just straight up shovelware. It's grim. I can handle a bad game, don't get me wrong, but it has to be bad in an interesting way. Being bad and boring is just the death knell for a video game. So this brings us to today's topic, the Polar Express. The movie. The video game. You remember the Polar Express movie, right? Just a cozy, warm blanket of a film? Do ya? F*** me. So some quick background real fast. The Polar Express was a children's book written by Chris Van Alsberg in 1985, chronicling the journey of an unnamed young boy waking in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve to discover a mysterious train with a conductor full of other kids going to see Santa at the North Pole. The train speeds to its destination, and lo and behold, the boy and the other kids get to meet St. Nick. The boy asks for a bell from Santa's reindeer, Santa gives it to him, and the kids head back home. Back on the train, he realizes the bell has fallen through a hole in his pocket, but wakes on Christmas morning to find it's been wrapped and placed under the tree. However, only the boy and his sister can hear the bell as they believe in Santa. Their parents just hear silence. And that's it, that's the story. A Christmas classic to be sure, but it's not meant to be that complex. So for director Robert Zemeckis to turn this 32-page children's book into a 100-minute movie, things were gonna get bloated. Needless action scenes, terrifyingly uncanny animation, a film that can somehow make the argument for too much Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, I know. And well, the Polar Express film is bizarre to witness. In my opinion, a pretty bad movie. But listen, it's a holiday classic to some, and I respect that. I have no room to talk anyway. I like the Jim Carrey Grinch movie. <laughs> I know. This being 2004 then, a video game was a sure thing to such a big holiday blockbuster release. This movie cost $165 million, and by God, Warner Brothers was going to merchandise the hell out of this sweet holiday story. Well, formerly sweet anyways. <laughs> so it goes, and we end up with The Polar Express, the video game. Originally released in November 2004 for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube, PC, and Game Boy Advance. GameCube's our console choice for the day, so we'll buckle in everyone, this game is a trip. So we start the game off, no big surprise for a movie-based title, with a clip from the film. Christmas Eve many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. Huh? This is The Polar Express! Huh? <laughs> Yeah, get used to the audio mixing being a bit terrible here. You can adjust various audio volumes in the settings, but the test audio is a bit... Uh, disturbing. <laughs> Beyond these weird quirks, though, the game starts off pretty basic. All the kids' tickets have gone missing, yes, including the Mandark child over here. Just kidding. We suddenly have a villain. It's a marionette Scrooge? Uh-huh. Listen, the movie was already bloated to accommodate a feature-length story, but the game now throws in an antagonist? For reasons? And one that pronounces Santa as Santa. Even Santa if they never reach the North Pole. Fine. Whatever. So this section of the game is pretty dang straightforward. You run through various sections of the train each with a different kind of gameplay mechanic, from opening jack-in-the-boxes with scaredy pants over here to pushing boxes around rush hour style to help the girl on the train get across. Okay, hey, slide this Whee! way! <laughs> it's all simple and sort of charming. I mean, it's very basic bare minimum game design, but it's serviceable. Plus, there's some beautiful glitches that are just so damn delightful. Weirdly enough, I wish there were more. It'd fit in with the somewhat terrifying animation style of the movie, at least. So eventually we do enough random minigames and activities like sneaking past creepy humming chef here. <laughs> to find all of the kids' missing tickets. An exceedingly simple task, but again, I at least appreciate the little variety that's here. There's even some little collectibles you can search for by flipping the camera forward or backward. A welcome feature that helps prevent awkward running towards the camera. This just in, the Polar Express game better than any Crash Bandicoot game ever.
Now there's one kid's ticket still missing, the young girl's. This ties back into the movie's plot as, for some reason I don't remember and can't understand, Tom Hanks' conductor says the girl has to come to the front of the train and they have to get there by traveling over the top of the f***ing thing, and God knows how cold it must be up there for kids in just their standard PJs. Why, Tom? So, Hero Boy over here, no joke this is the character's official name based on the credits, decides to go after them. What follows is a weirdly long segment where you run along the top of the train, constantly dodging obstacles that keep knocking this poor child over. And over. And over. And over again. Leads credence that this whole thing is a fever dream induced by head trauma, really. This segment is fine. Just some simple dodging while this progress bar on the corner here tells you how there's no hope left as evidently Tom and girl child are just little bunny rabbits just dancing across the top of the train cars at warp speed. Believe it or not, this segment goes on for about six minutes. Doesn't seem that long, but when the gameplay has no variation and just keeps going and going, it gets tedious real quick. Good thing I'm immature and giggle every time I get bonked by whatever. And hey, this game did a train level before Uncharted 2. Huh, interesting. This just in, the Polar Express game better than Uncharted 2. <laughs> Eventually, we're stopped by Tom Hanks, the magical train squatter version, <laughs> and suddenly our run DMC 8-track kicks in as we find ourselves skiing down an endless mountain to catch up with the train. <laughs> Another segment that's relatively short at about five minutes or so if you do it in one try, but seems to go on forever. And I may have had to retry it. Maybe. I'm an adult. We get to the front of the train and Ert and Bernie here decide illegal child labor is an important pillar of the Yuletide vehicle that is the Polar Express, so we have to toss a bunch of machine parts to them to fix the trans engine. And then a rhythm game, but shitty. Up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. Just melodious to the ears. Throw in a voodoo alligator lady and you're golden. We find Girl Child, and after a few more minigames, we finally have our first encounter with the Scrooge marionette. Now you want to go to the North Pole, do you? What? How? <sighs> this game, guys. This game. Uninspired gameplay, bold choices. Well, bold in that what in the world is going on kind of way, but fine. After an actual boss fight with this insane monstrosity, we finally kill him in the spirit of Christmas, with some snowballs with the help of some kids. Naturally, the conductor just casually shows up afterward, sus, and tells the kids to get back to the dining car. It's time for some hot chocolate. All right, here we go. Best and worst segment of the movie being adapted here. What have we got? Up, left, right, turn. Ah, uh, yes, another rhythm segment. Oh, geez, why is the accompanying music in these bits just so terrible and discordant? It's just loud and annoying with absolutely piercing brass yelling in your ear the entire time. At least the waiters and their pointy polygonal posteriors got it going on. It's at this point we finally, finally get to the North Pole. Then the three kids that have any semblance of a personality, and even then that's barely more than a lump of dough, end up on a runaway train car going down the seemingly endless San Franciscoian-like landscape of the North Pole. Now this is a complaint that I could launch the movie as well. These kids are in constant mortal danger. <laughs> It just feels totally bizarre for a sweet Christmas story like the Polar Express to be completely filled to the brim with child endangerment. Like, if I was a kid, I would sure as hell avoid getting on this magical train knowing that it's full of faulty connectors, evil toys, and a big-ass evil Scrooge. Unfortunately, once at the North Pole, the game takes a downward turn for the next big chunk. We have a runaway train segment with some honestly hilarious physics. This stomach churning segment where you spend way too much time in some kind of transport tube. Trust me, I'm keeping the footage here limited. It's not a fun time for the motion sick prone. And then some mild platforming as we ride conveyor belts and pull levers to get to the other child who ran away because he's an idiot. Sorry, Piaz. That's my address! Thankfully though, right after this, we get to return to some standard platforming. As I said earlier, variety isn't a bad thing, but this game has no through line of logic, and it's just so weird. The segments on the train range from okay to fine, sure, but they have their charm. Once we're at the North Pole, however, it's just freaking random. When we get to this point when we're climbing Santa's big ol' mountain of presents, it comes as a big relief. Sure, it's basic with no frills gameplay-wise, but at least it all works fine and doesn't feel so out of nowhere. Just be sure not to fall, though. There's no safety net and you'll be killed on impact. Grim. Grim, grim stuff. Help! I'm falling! Ooh. 
I mean, no, you can't die, but you just have to redo all the platforming again. Better than the barf tube, to be honest. Once we've climbed Mount Commercialism, it's time for the final segment of the game. A vehicle segment. Not even those polygonal waiter booties can save this now. <laughs> So a creepy elf guy lets Hero Boy get to pilot an airship carrying literally all of the toys for Christmas. No pressure, but at this point we've operated heavy machinery by dance and killed, so I guess he can handle it. We carry Santa's large sack. So many sort of jokes, you guys, like, just so many. I've been advised to spare you of all of them because of, you know, ad friendliness and all that, so... <sighs> but just understand, so many scrotum jokes. So we carry Santa's... Uh, large apparatus full of toys. That's clean, right? Across the North Pole skies as we try to keep the toys from hitting any bridges or buildings along the way, trying to keep the sack from becoming too lopsided or bruised. With all these obstacles, the sack's a little too low-hanging in my opinion. Uh. Oh, f so we somehow make it to Santa relatively unscathed, no thanks to Mandark over here again. Could you have made the ride any more bumpy? Ooh, can we toss him over? And the game ends. No, 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 really. We get a brief cutscene of Santa leaving and roll credits. We're done. So not only did this game contain the bloat of the movie, but it completely removes any kind of message for kids. It's just a bunch of random activities that are vaguely Christmassy, and then they just peace out. With all of my complaints about the movie, at least we actually get to see Santa in it. Here, though, we just get to fly the large ball sack. Eh. Don't care anymore. And you're done. What message about belief in child wonderment? Nah, this is the Polar Express game. These kids get to see Santa and that's it. For all we know, they're trapped there in the North Pole, just standing there. I'd say the conductor would take care of them, but not only does he terrify me, may I remind you that he for some reason took this little girl to the top of the train amongst all these damn metal signs that could have killed them 1,000 times over. He's not a good guy, even with the voice of brother Tom Hanks. Would you children care to join us in the dining car? My headcanon is that Jim Hanks, Tom Hanks' brother who does all his voices for video games, took the horror from this character and then brought it to the role of Woody in Kingdom Hearts 3. Am I just saying this as an excuse to show Woody going off in Kingdom Hearts 3? Maybe. My guess is no one's ever loved you before. Well, with that, that's the Polar Express game. You can beat it in like less than two hours. Seriously, less than two hours. Like, I'm all for keeping a game concise and to the point. You never want anything to overstay its welcome, but two hours, that's hilariously short. You can easily beat it even faster if you disregard the random collectibles. Overall though, I'd honestly say play this game. No, really, it's just so bizarre. Like just saying the Polar Express, the book, the movie, the game, out loud. It's beautiful and terrible. Just find it for really cheap. It's such an odd experience that I really think people should check it out. Not necessarily a good experience, but an interesting one. Like I said, I'm in for games that make fascinating choices, good or bad. And I mean, it's only two hours. You've got the time. Come on, you're watching my channel, aren't you? And with that, we're gonna end it here. I mean, the game doesn't have an ending itself, so it's kind of fitting that the video about it doesn't have one either. Have a good one, happy holidays, and stay safe. Oh, and get yourself some hot chocolate. I can't guarantee that pointy butt waiters will sashay into existence for your pleasure, but it's worth a shot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it big time. I got lots more videos to come, so be sure to click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. I highly recommend checking out my video recently about all the After the Last Airbender games that have been released. It was a ton of fun and covers a whole bunch of games. You don't want to miss it. And again, I do stream all the time over on my Twitch channel, so give me a follow there as well. I'm making the Polar Express an annual streaming game. I'm just saying. That's all for me, guys. I hope you guys have a happy holidays and safe winter break. Have a good one.